Hey everybody, this is Mark Cedar Creek Bottoms Farmstead with another fireside chat. Today I'm up in the Tidalega National Forest. This is on Sunday. Uh, we're going to go down here to number three watershed lake known as Lake Virginia to look around a few minutes at a spot that I got a call about. Uh, I'm not going to bore y'all with the drive through here with this truck because it'd be rattling. But we're right here at the Bulls Gap Trailhead, also known as Rebecca Mountain. This the last big mountain ridge in Alabama besides Flag Mountain down in Coosa County. But right now I'm letting you look back toward the west and you can see the marble quarries way in there, town of Sylacauga, and back toward Creepy Mountain and um, other places. So not gonna bore you like i said with the whole drive because uh, the truck will be making racking on this gravel road shaking and everything you know how these some of these national forest roads are have ripples in them uh did get to go visit greg yesterday but we were on private land all the time and i you know without permission i typically don't film private property if i can help it um unless you know i just didn't feel appropriate to do that yesterday um had a good time uh we did have a little something happen but i'm gonna let greg talk about it um you know on a future show or something um but me and jonathan had a very good time up around the bankhead national forest so i'm gonna stop the video here and uh we're gonna ease down the road if i see something interesting i'll turn it back on till we get to Virginia Lake. Anyway, we'll see you here shortly. Okay, y'all. Yes, yeah, a little sprinkling going on. I'm sitting here at one of the hunter's camps. This is not the Hollands hunter's camp. This is the one over here on the other side of the mountain. This is the little area that comes into it. Uh, why I was going to stop right here and tell about this a minute is this is where this management area, Hollands management area, is divided into two parts. One's A, one's B. And one weekend they allow hunts on a side next weekend's b side so this is a game check spot right here this is where the game officials set up to weigh and check deer that way people don't have to drive all the way over to the, ch the main check-in station so also there's a little campground down here so my understanding is i did not take this report but i did um, know the person who did and my understandings a guy came in here that was going to hunt this side that was having a hunt here that day he got here about three in the morning i think he come from somewhere off a couple of hours away he knew that the game officials would be setting up here at 5 30 um you know issuing doe tags or whatever and i think you know he was kind of wanting to get here and get a jump so he came on down and pulled down into the campground and just slept in his truck uh, sometime between 4 and 4.30, my understanding is he got woken up by something walking around his truck very big. Uh, I think he couldn't ever really see it good because it was pitch black outside. Uh, I think it rocked his truck, my understanding. Um, he, he, like I said, he never did get a good look, at, but he could see the silhouette and said it was huge, what I heard. Of course, this guy cranks his truck up and takes off um don't know if he hunted that day or if he left went back home or he went to sort of cog and waited the daylight and come back i don't really know i don't even know if he told the game officials or not probably didn't um there's been howls heard from here vocalizations from this area right here especially right back up on the mountain where we just came from and down in here 
Now we're still a few miles from Lake Virginia where something went on about a month ago. But, uh, and I still got to catch up with that fella to get uh, more deep in it. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about that because that's not really going to affect anything. Uh, we just, me and Jonathan's going to ride over and look around. So we're going to pull down here and just look around a minute. And uh, might be somebody camping in here. I doubt it this time of year. But I was just going to show you this little campground. It's pretty neat. It's just a little primitive camp. A lot of horse people use it. Uh, Cause they come out here and ride a lot of these roads and it's, it's a pretty neat little camp uh, there is a power line coming through it which told me might be a travel route for a booger uh, they could be using these power line right of ways i know they cross them a lot and also i think they'll walk them a lot and you can kind of see it goes all the way down through yonder so uh, there is a couple of creeks and then bottoms, so uh, one could possibly use it. So he's on down through here and show you this. And it's a neat little place to come camp if you ever want to come camp. Uh, I do think the Forest Service and the game wards kind of keep an eye on it so that I don't think as much riffraff goes on, if you know what I mean by there. Um, and this is probably three or four miles from the Hollins Hunters Camp, by the way, crow flies. Now, by road, it's a good little distance. But, and this is what some of the Tidedigga National Forest kind of looks like during the summer. You can still see pretty good in places. But, of course, it's greened up. So, uh, we'll go on here. You don't see nobody here at the first camp spot, so pull in here and let y'all see that. I'm sorry about all the beating and banging of the truck. This truck is a hunting truck, so, and it's old and got a lot of miles on it. You gonna run that for me a minute? Yeah, I got you, Chief. Okay, so, this is one little spot, and you can tell it gets used pretty regular. Some pretty flowers coming up. Um, little daisies. Yeah, little daisies. And those, uh, well, actually, not daisies. Those are uh, black-eyed Susans. Oh, really? Yeah, and I see some uh, looks like Queen Queen a uh, Queen land. Uh, I can't even talk. Lord of mercy. Lace. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, boy, I tell you sometimes. And if you notice, this is longleaf pines. This is a prevalent tree in our area. Uh, of course, our woods were hardwoods. And we did have a lot of long leaf in it. Most of the time it grew up on top of the ridges. Of course, you know, now you have the long leaf restoration act and they're pretty much taking all the hardwoods out planting just long leaf and that ain't the way our ecosystem was. Uh you can't yeah, I was gonna say you can't film oh oh you're doing your phone, I'm sorry. This is another little part of the campground. I've been wanting to come do a camp out here a small one you couldn't get a ton of people in here but it'd be a nice place to do a little camp out since i know there's been a siding here before and because of vocalizations uh from right up there on top of the hill so i think this would be a a good place to check in the near future uh -uh -uh. people just throw their trash out these days and this is the last part of the campground so you can tell it's not a huge one uh, i mean you can get good many people in here but you'd have to put the camps all pretty close together there is a creek down here in the bottom a small branch and there's a bigger creek right over yonder about a mile which is Tallahassee creek which starts out here at the foot of the mountain goes all the way to chillsburg um, so it starts right out here comes out of three or four branches forming together so but it's a nice little camp it's just right off highway 148 right below the uh, bull gap trailhead a lot of the people who are a lot of people who are walking the pinholdy sometimes camp down here uh because they're right here at it uh they'll come down here and camp at night then go up there and park their vehicle on you know top and then start their journey toward highway 77 which is 20 something miles away and uh, then a lot of them will walk down the mountain down here to camp too. 
Uh, but it's, it's a pretty good camp, except for the, whoever throws out their trash around here. But anyway, you know, people these days just, you know, anyway. You know, since even getting started on that one, I'll get mad. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you something this place is full of. And I know a lot of people don't, you know, I know some people don't think about that. The place is full of quartz. Will you show them all that quartz laying on the ground right there? Yeah. And typically, quartz areas end up having, for some reason, stuff happen. You know, paranormal. Um, that's one thing Mr. Tall Banco done. He looked for what kind of rocks were in the area. If he seen a big quartz concentration, he knew there was going to be other stuff here in this area. Uh, they say a lot of Bigfoot activity happens around quartz areas too. Coincidence? I don't know. Um, haven't put a really a lot of time and study to that. So, all right. You show them a couple of them. Okay, good. Yeah, I uh, pointed it out and everything. Yeah, yeah. Over here on this side of um, on this national forest is full of quartz. Uh, I've seen some in here, almost the size of my truck, up on the side of that mountain. Got you granite, but uh, just a lot of quartz veins in here too. And of course, yeah, there's gold in here. Uh, you can get a permit from the uh, Forest Service and come out here and pan. You can't do no dredging, but you can pan the old timey way. But we do have a gold camp uh, over in Clay County. Uh, Jonathan went to it uh, weekend four last with his uncle. And uh, they pan some, they, they use dredges over there and stuff. And he, uh, they ended up finding some gold. I mean, you won't get rich, but uh, it's fun to do. I've done it before. Uh, so if you ever want to come to Alabama and go and do gold panning or gold or using a dredge, look up Alabama Gold Camp, Crawford, Alabama. It's over in Clay County, not far from here, about 20 miles. And uh, spend the weekend. They got camping, they got ca cabins, they got a store, primitive camping on the creek. They'll rent you the stuff to do the panning. Or they have groups on Saturday and Sunday, I think, that bring the dredges in. And you can go help them. You can help the people with the dredges. And at the end of the day, everybody gets to share what everybody found. So that's pretty neat. You, know, you have to be part of the association. You have to be part of the association, okay? Yeah, well, but it is really fun to do. I don't think it hardly costs nothing to be in the association, does it? No, technically it's free. Okay, so you could just really join, and okay, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But you could call over and ask that if that's something you was really interested in. I, I would tell everybody at least one time in their life to go try that out. Um, Alabama did have a lot of gold in I know I'm getting off Bigfoot on or something else, but I, I'm always going to shoot some history or something going on here because I like for people to know if you come to Alabama, it just ain't about football <laughs> so, <laughs> or car racing. So, you know, there's a lot more to Alabama than uh, Alabama Crimson Tide and Auburn football and, that and NASCAR. Yes. 20, well, 32 miles from here. It's on the northern end of the county. All right, y'all, we're gonna stop the camera again because we're fixing to travel over to um, Lake Virginia, but I did want to bring up about this guy. This, like I said, this sighting does not belong to me. It was another person that took this sighting report. Um, thought I'd mention it since I was coming right through here. So, um, it is a place one of these days I do want to come camp or sit one, or at least sit one night for a little while just to see if I get some vocalizations or have any interaction ha happen here. I know it's been here before. I know that howls come off the mountain here in different sections. People have heard them. Um, later this week, me and him may ride the Skyway Road all the way through. We do we'll get some video from that too and plus i gotta try to catch up with everybody this week so um so hopefully in the next few weeks i'm gonna have y'all a good bit of video of different places and people telling their stories and everything all right jonathan go ahead and stop the video on this one and we'll pick back up here in a few minutes okay y'all we're here at virginia lake at the boat ramp in which is kind of on the smaller end of the lake 
Uh, I got a report from a guy here from this area back about a month ago that he was out here fishing. Uh, he heard what he said was vocals coming back from this boat ramp area, but they were more, and it's hard to tell. Sister, get down. Get down. Sister. They were back around the corner of the lake, maybe half a mile. It makes goes one way, then it curves back toward the right. They were coming back this way. It's already after dark. They've been fishing. And they started having rocks thrown in the water. I was hearing tree limbs. He said he sounded like a couple times they heard even what sounded like a log um, fell or hit or something. So me and him talked in length for a couple of hours about some other things. I hope that one day I can sit down with him and uh, go through it and maybe he'll be even willing to um you know tell it on video even if he don't want his face maybe he won't mind his voice being on there that way he can tell it in his own terms but we'll see if he's willing because that's one thing i do not press nobody to do something they don't want to do so so there has been some other activity from here and this ain't far from the other lake i've showed y'all in the past a little number two watershed uh, all three of these watersheds feed one into one creek and feed into Lake Howard, which is Silicaga's drinking water. So the main reason I didn't get out there, some people over here camping and everything. So I wasn't going to make a big uh, rigmarole about everything. So just wanted to show it to you. Uh, more likely what he heard, uh, he's already dealt with them in the past or he already knew what he was hearing. Um, I do want to come out here one night and sit for a little while uh, and see if anything takes place, see if I hear any vocalizations or or might even get in a boat myself and paddle around since we got kayaks just to see what might take place. And that's a good way to do your research. If there's lakes that you can access, it's a good way. Um, a lot of people have got interactions that way. Uh, I know some people over on Lake Tuscaloosa has had a lot of stuff happen on Lake Tux Tuscaloosa, uh, especially up in the back part where there's nobody hardly lives. I've heard from other lakes. Uh, Scott Carpenter has talked about that's how he got started in the Bigfoot. He made a call and darn if he didn't get something coming down the hill flying at him. So, so something to think about. But I'm going to stop right here and we're going to go to one more spot and show you and we'll go from there. All right, y'all, showed you the boat ramp where the guy kind of heard the vocalizations from. So now we're going around over here to where the dam of the lake is and uh, show you a little bit of this real quick. This is down on, the, of course, the big part of the lake. And yeah, National Forest Service is trying to keep people across this dam but it's hard to do but uh anyway we'll leave out here and uh see see what's going on come sister flying to me walk right here a minute like i said this is the lower end of the lake this is where i need to come and listen some at night go to the boat ramp then maybe come down here and walk out here on this uh spillway and listen see if i hear anything and uh help me keep a listen out for the truck okay, okay. so we're going to just walk right out here a second and uh i'll show you part of the lake and part of the spillway Years ago, I used to come out here and uh, me and my dad quail hunted some. Out here used to be a few coveys of quail around this uh, place. So, come on, we'll ease on out here, Jonathan. We'll go right out here about where y'all were. Show them the lake and uh, show them Like I said, this wasn't the first time I'd heard something from this lake. Uh, I know there was something years ago. 
I don't know if it's something that they come in here after hunting season or if they're here year round. That'd be something I'd have to establish. I know they're at Holland's years round, which is not far from here. Like I said, there's the you used to go down there and fish in the spillway. It's kind of tough to get down there, but used to you go right down here, drive down and drive down to it. Now they got it fixed where people can't drive across this, but you can still see where some people was coming around, probably in Jeeps or something small. This was the last lake they built. Uh, they built it in the 80s. I forgot how many acres it is. Um, used to be all Cerisa. That's Bedenza planted on in here now. It looks like most of it's bahia grass. Noticed something coming in here a while ago. A lot of the bicolor's dead on the side of the road like it got sprayed. It's an interesting note. Bicolor is a, a bush that makes a seed that's good for quail and turkeys. Deer eat the leaves, eat the flowers. So I'll show you part of the lake here. Y'all can see it. Good piece back up there to the uh, good piece back up there to the uh, um, boat ramp where you had to put in at. You used to put a boat in over here, and people used to come jump off the tower. I've jumped off of it before. Um, some people drowned here, and I think there's another reason they went to uh, shutting this off, make it harder for people to get over here. Um, this used to be a big hangout. People in the summertime swimming and people jumping off at and like I said a couple people jumped off of it and drowned and so you know not a good thing this would be a good place to set up at night and just sit back and listen for a little while because the way he was talking he was right around that curve in there somewhere y'all can look at this lake on google you'll see the boat ramp up toward the other end and you know this down here some good fishing uh, very clean water comes out of the mountains over y'all you can't see the mountains right now we're sitting pretty low um, I heard something but maybe I didn't I don't know but you can see there's a large percentage of the field left um, they're keeping the pines from growing up in it they used to let the pines and everything grow up yes they're I guess they're coming in bush hogging it ever so often uh, look like they'd make a good green patch over here for the hunters man that bottom right there would be a jam up place for a green patch we're just going to walk around here a few minutes, see if we hear anything, notice anything out of the ordinary. There's the pothole from that. Like I said, a lot of people used to go right down there, fish, catch a lot of fish out of that pothole. And uh, I can see some tracks down there. Somebody's still easing down in there. Them like I said, it used to be like a little road went down that edge of them woods, come down. You could come right there, and you could actually edge down there years ago. That was back when you could come in here. So, all righty. See a few deer tracks up here on top of the dam. And you can see the lake kind of goes back up that way a good bit. There's a lot of like sloughs, you know, where old hollers were, where it backs up. I don't know how deep this water is. I can't remember. I want to say it's 70, 80 feet right in here, right there where that spillway is, but I can't remember. 
but uh, yeah, there's some good fishing here. I wanted to get out up at the other place, but there was somebody camping and you know, I didn't want to disturb him too much and then hear me talking and so um, that's the drawback about being on public property. You never know when somebody's gonna pull up or whatever. We'll come back out here and do this some more. Um, and one reason I'm showing you this place is a place you can come enjoy if you wanted to, to walk, you know, bring your kayak, canoe, flat bottom. Uh, it is electric motor only or paddle, but it'd be a nice place to come fishing. Also, we know something's here. That's the main reason I'm telling you there's something here. That way you know it's here. That way when you come fishing, there ain't no surprise about it. Because that's what we need to be doing is putting the truth out there that I know a lot of people don't want to tell them where they're at because they're afraid of other people. And I, and I understand that completely. I mean, I kind of, kind of, sort of keep Creepy Mountain kind of, you know, I don't give a good description to it. Some people have figured it out and that's fine. Uh, I'm not worried about that, but plus you got to go through a gate to get in there and there's cameras all over the place, so not too worried about that. But uh, I know some of you uh, travel in and you know, travel, and I know there's local people watching this. And I feel like I need to tell you this stuff here if you bring your family out here fishing or walking or come out here with your dog to walk your dog or there's stuff here i want you to be mindful of it and wherever i know on public land some of these are i'm gonna kind of let you know unless it's another person's area that's working it then it's up to them if they want to tell people about it or not so uh i don't tell where other people's places are that's uh, one reason I <clears throat> did not f ask yesterday to film at Greg's because it was on private property and I didn't feel right about doing that. So if we'd been on public land, I may have done some of it. But uh, yesterday we never got on any public land hardly. So just the way I am, I just, you know, don't want people doing me that way and I won't do people that way myself. Because anybody's giving me reports or locations, you know, not going to divulge their name, where they live, unless that's something they personally want to do. If they personally want to get on camera, tell their experience, that's fine. Uh, if they want to give what county state they're in, that's fine. Even what city they're in, uh, you know, that's fine. But if they don't, then they don't get brought up. So it's sad that we have to put all these roadblocks in because of a few knuckleheads that come in here and tear stuff up. And, then it ruins it for all of us, the ones that will try to take care of it and not trash the place or you try to dig it up and make mud holes. It's uh, sad that uh, that happens. So, All right, y'all, we're going to end this video here. There will be more this week, so I'm not going to say goodbye yet because uh, me and Jonathan will have a some other places this week we'll be popping to, checking on. So just want to tell you a little bit about over here at the watershed. Guy heard the vocals, heard the limbs snapping, what he thought was rocks being thrown in the water, and what sounded like some big logs getting thrown. And um, there were several of them, just wasn't one. So, all right, we're going to sign off. We'll be back later. Hey everybody, um, just going to talk a minute, uh, we're going to, I hope you enjoyed the video.
of some more of the Tidega National Forest. Actually, that video was done back about three weeks ago. Uh, we had the grist mill that I wanted to go ahead and get uploaded, and then we had the middle part of the National Forest I wanted to show. So Jonathan will be in this film too. So that, that tells you it's been back a couple of weeks ago. Got me some visitors here at my pond today. Family of geese looks like the mom and daddy with all their goslings. And uh, you know, here they are. Figure I'd show you coming into the pond. Pretty good many of them. Looks like about 12 or 13 of them. So anyway, you can see them coming in the pond. And uh, they like they want to be fed, don't they? <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video of Tidega National Forest. I've showed you um, some of the middle section. You've seen the southern section again, but I wanted to show you Lake Virginia and talk about that guy's encounter a little bit. I hate I couldn't stay there at the boat ramp where a lot of that took place, but there were some people camping there, and uh, I try not to do that when I'm around people. Uh, I hope you got to watch Woodwalkers this past week. Uh, I think we had a very good show with Eric, uh, Spencer and Misty, and Sherry jumped in, and me talking about a different subject, um, kind of getting off into the giants and about the Euphrates River drying up and uh, Nephilim and, and just different things of the Middle East. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, there's, there's some more stuff that I'd like to talk about in the future that I've have mentioned on here that I was going to speak about some more. Um, I've got to speak with one of the subscribers this week. Had a very good conversation with him. Really enjoyed it and um, hope to talk with him some more uh, in the future about different things. Um, of course, we'll be doing our live. It's uh, Friday night as usual, 7 o'clock. So y'all tune in. Um, we have our campfire this Saturday night, starting at 6. So if, if you're in a local area and want to come, you're more than welcome to come. I know it's hot weather to have a campfire, so it'll be a small one. More probably make more smoke to run mosquitoes off than anything. Didn't get, get to do last week, so uh, like I wanted to do because I had to work. Um, so anyway, just wanted to... Um, touch base with y'all hope you enjoy this video though uh and just some stuff um uh, while my son was here we were trying to just get out and about um uh, him living right at the columbus he doesn't get out much you know in the woods like i want him to and i wanted us to do some hiking but uh um uh, you know we didn't really get to do any hiking but uh, maybe next time he's here we will uh, we didn't really get to go up on Creepy Mountain much while he was here. I think we went up there twice. Um, I will be getting back up there here too pretty soon. So, uh, Hadn't heard of anything else going on the last few weeks. It's still been kind of quiet. Uh, I don't know if it's because we're getting into a hot weather time of the year or, or what it is. Uh, I really don't know. But... Uh, Anyway, I won't keep you much longer. Um, you know, just remember everybody we will support. Uh, Woodwalkers with Spencer and Misty. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, Beast Crew. Uh, you know, Mark and Larry and the others that are involved with it, which Spencer and Misty is part of that too. But... Uh, Y'all remember uh, Chris Reinhardt discovered Sasquatch. Uh, Kyle with Encrypted Connections. Of course, Barton Nunley with the Humanoids. And there's Night Callers. And there's uh, another guy that, in fact, I'm going to be doing a show with him tomorrow night. Uh, I think at 6 o'clock, the Red Creek Mafia. So if y'all uh, want to check that out, uh, I think we'll be talking about some of the things that's happened here in this area. So... Um, but that's at six o'clock central. Yeah. Y'all come over and support it and, uh, you know, check it out. Um, like I said, I don't know of anything else going on. It's just, it's been kind of quiet last few weeks. Um, 
you know, been on shutdown this week. I was off last night. Uh, me and Rebecca did go watch some fireworks. Tried to rain on us. So, uh, and me and her got out for a little while today and rode around for a little while and just got out and tried to enjoy a few hours. Uh, me and her being able to be together sometimes. This, uh, this time of year gets a little tough sometimes with me working and farming and all that. So, uh, I know it's been real hot on people. You know, make sure you uh, check on elderly people, uh, check on friends. You're going to be outside a while, drink a lot of water. Uh, remember with this homesteading, we have to pace ourselves. Uh, my ancestors used to work out in this hot sun all the time, and I did too. Pace yourself. Uh, take breaks, drink plenty of water. If you can do your work early in the mornings, late in the evenings, that's when to do it. Midday, maybe get up on a shade tree and work on stuff. Um, you know, different things of that nature. So be careful. Don't get out there and get too hot and get sick. Um, so I think in Friday night, if we can, if we have good service, we may walk around, show the corn patch. I'll show you my sorry-looking watermelon patch that's really grown up in the last few days. Uh, grass and stuff has just went crazy in it. Uh, it'll still make watermelons, but I just, uh, it's one of those things that jumped on me. Um, I got to check and see if my pumpkins are up. So, um, we may do a walk around Friday night if it's where we can, if it's not raining or anything going on. So, um, anyway, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Um, uh, just, uh, had, like I said, ain't heard nothing here lately. It's been real quiet been very quiet here at the house um gotta get started on bush hogging and uh doing some other things got some of my projects i need to jump on anyway uh y'all give us a like subscribe hit that notification bell comment share tell your friends about us and i really do care about the comments i hope everybody knows that i try to comment back to everything i even go back and search some of the past ones even from a month or two ago i'll go check them out uh, because they don't give me a notification i think it gives rebecca the notification so i do go back and try to check things out and i hope you enjoy the geese uh if you can see them there he's a pretty good family of them so um as long as they ain't tearing up and causing a big mess i don't usually mess with them um you know, they can get mean with them little ones with them, though. So, uh, like she's done a pretty good job. She's raised a pretty good clutch there. Uh, Y'all remember, love one another. Take care of one another. Get along. Be kind. And, and take care of each other. Don't be judgmental. And y'all just be careful out there in this world we live in today. Be careful. There's a lot of deception going on, a lot of evil. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go ahead and say it. There's more coming and it's going to be worse than you think it is. Um, there's a lot of things, so be mindful of that. Till then, until I see you Friday night, y'all have a good rest of the week. Like I say, stay, stay cool and hydrated and check on other people. You'd be surprised that people that don't have air conditioners. You'd be surprised at the people that, it, you know, just, I don't know. But, you know, check on your neighbors, friends, family. Check on them. Nothing else, just text them, make sure they're doing okay. All right, this is Mark from Cedar Creek Bottoms Farmstead Life. And I'll see y'all Friday night if nothing happens. Y'all take care. Love y'all. Bye-bye.